Okie dokie, artichoke. Hello, let me just take my mask off real quick now that I have the door shut. Because we always wear our masks when we're around other people if they haven't been vaccinated or we haven't been vaccinated yet. All right, so what we are doing today is a very, very short episode of Full Steam Ahead. Um, we are going to move on from learning about or doing experiments with temperature, like heat and ice and stuff like that. We're going to move on to learning about light. So for this week's episode, we're going to start at the very beginning. And I am going to demonstrate a little craft that you can do with kids of any age, really, to demonstrate how light moves in a straight line. So what you're gonna need for today, this is gonna be super quick by the way, but it will bring hours of fun, particularly if the power goes out. This is a really fun way to make it enjoyable for kids to be in the dark and not be so afraid of it as well. So what we're gonna need is a flashlight. The more powerful, the better, and it should have a relatively small beam. I'm not gonna shine it directly in your eyes. And you're gonna need some tape, some scissors, a drawing implement, some little skewers or kebabs. These are little skewers that we painted for a past project, and now I'm just gonna use them for something else. And then some cardstock. Um, you do want it to be like a thicker paper so that it's not super, super flimsy, but you don't need it. And then optional things are tracing paper, a book with your favorite illustrations. So maybe you want to do Trixie and Nuffle Bunny from Nuffle Bunny by Mo Willems. Or maybe you want to do one of the animals from Karma Wilson's Bear series. Those are always really fun. So you might want to um, use those and then some tracing paper so that you can trace your favorite character. Um, and then some colored markers or pencils or crayons or something if you want to decorate what we're going to make. But it is not necessary for our activity. So what we're going to do is demonstrate how light moves in a straight line with shadow puppetry. So what we're going to do is make our own shadow puppets today. So these are just two examples from if you give a mouse a cookie. This is what they look like at the end. And then I will turn off the lights after we make one together and show you how you can use them. I'm sure you already know, but we're gonna show you for the purposes of doing this along with little kids. All right, so I think what I'm gonna do, since I already traced with tracing paper and then how to, uh, when you give a mouse a cookie, I think what I'm gonna do is freehand one now. It's not gonna be one of my favorite characters. I think I just want to freehand a ghosty. So I'm just gonna make a little ghost and cut him out. So I'm gonna do a little swirly you doesn't have to be even just a nice little upside down U, and then I'm gonna make his undersides all ruffly he looks kind of like a cartoon octopus or one of those cocktail hot dogs that has had the bottom sliced open like they do in anime okay so I'm making a little ghosty and drawing his little eyes and I will cut those out and he's gonna be a happy ghosty so he's gonna have a big smiley face okay so here's my ghost and this is seriously going to be so quick. I'm just going to cut him out of my cardstock. Like I said, why you want to use cardstock is because it's nice and sturdy. It's not super flimsy. Now, of course, this could be an activity that lasts for as long as you want to make it last for because we all know that children have boundless imaginations, and if you ask them what kind of characters they want to make a shadow puppet show about, they're going to come up with a list of 300. <laughs> so you could end up drawing and cutting out all 300 of those characters, real or imagined. So this could turn into something that you do all day, but I thought we would get started on light today because it's been really gloomy for the last couple of days. And I know that we've had snow on either side of Ukiah, um, not near in town, but you know, in the surrounding areas on either side. And so I'm aware that some people might be losing um, power. And if that does happen, um, a one way to make um, darkness a little less scary for kiddos is to do shadow puppets with a flashlight. Maybe put up a 
curtain behind you like I've done so that I can demonstrate at the end. And then make up stories and make it fun. And then it's not quite so scary to be in the dark. Okay, so I just cut out my little ghosty outline and now I'm gonna cut out his eyes. And actually I'm gonna make a little hole with my skewer so that I don't slice my own finger off. Okay. There we go. And cut out his mouth. And then, like I was saying, if you want to take this further and make them into just plain old puppets, not just shadow puppets, because obviously if they're shadow puppets, you don't need to decorate them because they're gonna be dark and you're not gonna be able to see the details or anything. But if you want to make them into things that you can use both as puppets and shadow puppets, like with light and without, you can definitely also spend some time decorating them, coloring them, adding little, like gluing little gemstones and feathers and stuff, whatever you want to add. All right. And cutting out his mouth. This is a lot more difficult than I thought it would be. He's gonna have a slightly jagged smile, that's okay. All right, and let's cut his eyes. Here's another example of why it's a good idea to use cardstock. If this were regular paper, he'd be shredded by now, oh no. Okay. And we all know that the little like, little kids especially love to cut stuff. So, you know, cutting out shadow puppets is always a fun use of time. Okay, there's one eye, just one more eye, and then I will show you the next step. Okay. And last little bit, and then we will move on to attaching our shadow puppet to the support bar. Okay, so I've cut out my little ghosty, just like there, hello. There we go. All right, so now, as you probably guessed, what we're gonna do is tape our skewer to the back of Ghosty so that we can hold him up. Super simple, like I said, we're gonna start at the beginning with light and then we're gonna move our way into more difficult crafts and experiments as we go. So, here is little Ghosty, ready to go. So when I say we're going to be demonstrating how light moves in a straight line to get kids started on learning about light, things like how you can bend light, but left to its own devices, it moves in a straight line. Um, and we'll also be eventually talking about things like mirrored images and how light affects uh, the ability of things to, or how light can make it so that you can see things mirrored. Um, and we'll also be talking about cameras. We'll be making a camera later on, but for now we're starting off with the very basics. Light moves in a straight line. So the way we demonstrate this is by doing shadow puppets. Essentially what you're doing is you're showing kids that if you, I'm gonna show this down low, there we go. If you flash a light and you hold your hand in front of it, it moves in a straight line. So when you block that light, it doesn't move around your hand. It doesn't somehow shine underneath it you block it when you put your hand in front of it. It's the same concept with a shadow puppet. So if you uh, have your flashlight shining straight at a sheet behind me, like I'll be showing you in just a second, and then you hold your shadow puppet in front of it, it will um, show the shadow on the sheet because like if you hold it far enough away because your um, shadow puppet is only blocking part of the light so the parts that blocking it create the shadow the parts that aren't blocking the light show the corona of light around your shadow puppet so i'm going to turn off the lights and i'm going to show you really quickly but obviously this is a science craft that you can take wherever you want i'm showing you how to make a really quick simple shadow puppet but i am assuming you at home are going to make however many of whatever creature you like and do whatever kind of activities with them that you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the lights and then I will show you the shadow puppet in effect on my sheet. And then we are gonna be done for this afternoon, okay? So like I said, a nice short, sweet episode. So let me go turn off the lights really quickly. 
It's best, like I said, if you have a flashlight that has a really, really intense small beam, something like this that's bigger is gonna diffuse the light too much and your shadow puppet won't be very visible. But let's see how dark I can get it in here. Turn off this light and turn off these lights over in the corner. La-da-da. Okay, got it pretty dark. I've got my flashlight on. You see my flashlight is not very bright, right? You can barely see it. But if I stand up here, nice and close, and I put my little shadow puppet, so you see it makes a nice big shadow. So when you're talking to kids about how light moves in a straight line, you can say the closer you move your flashlight to your shadow puppet, the smaller the corona of light around your puppet becomes because less and less of the light is showing around your puppet and more of it is blocked by your puppet. If you hold it close enough, there's no light at all. If you move it farther away from your puppet, you can see it on the sheet. So if you want to make this into a discussion about light moving in a straight line to get us started on learning about light and science, uh, you can definitely do that. Otherwise, if you don't want to, you could just put on a uh, shadow puppet show. Let me show you what my little If You Give a Mouse a Cookie guy looks like as well. So here's If You Give a Mouse a Cookie. Right, right up there. Ooh, ooh, there we go. There he is. This is the scene where he eats the cookie and he's really excited and he throws his hands up in the air. All right, so that is how you make your own shadow puppets. And if you are so inclined, that is how you talk to children um, or how you can, if you choose, talk to children about how light moves in a straight line. So I'm gonna turn all my lights back on and then I'm gonna say goodbye. Let's just turn this one on actually. Let's just do that one for now, okay. So um, I don't really have much news for today. We do still have the Mandarin Duck Grab and Go Origami Kits available for checkout, if, or not for checkout, to take home. You just get to keep them. Uh, each kit comes with three flat sheets of origami paper, one sheet that's been folded, and then one that like folded and then laid flat again so you can see what the folds are, and then one that is in the shape of the Mandarin Duck so you can see what the end product is supposed to look like, as well as a sheet of instructions. There's a limit of two kits per household, so if you would like to get a couple of them, please give us a call at 463-4490 and we will set you up with an appointment to pick them up. If you would like to get some kits for a classroom or like a day group, there is a limit of 10 kits per group. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this little demonstration of how you can show kids that light moves in a straight line or just make shadow puppets at home if that's what you want. Um, doesn't have to turn into a science conversation, but it's always fun when it does. And otherwise, I hope you have a fantastic day and I will see you on Friday for Toddler Storytime. I will have a lot more news on Friday. All right, so that's at 10.30 on Facebook Live if you're interested on Friday. Otherwise, I will see you next week on Wednesday, okay? Bye.